Well, here at Dublin International Short Film Festival, we have D.B. Sweeney with us, so we're welcome. Uh, Thank you. D.B., you have a short film festival in our festival this year called uh, To Do Mix. If you can tell us a little bit about the film, um, the idea behind it and the project. Two Dumb Mix is a comedy. It's about two guys who, as the title says, are very stupid. They're supposed to be, in America, we call Irish Americans mix. So it's not exactly a positive term, but it's, it's a, you know, it meant affectionately in this case. Um, they can't get out of each other's way. They're, they meet in jail and they cook up a scheme of how they're going to pay their lawyers to beat the charges. They're not evil. They're not like big time criminals. They're just sort of losers. <laughs> and uh, Sean Austin is such a great big hearted guy that I thought it would be really fun to do this kind of broad comedy with him. And, and I think that that's what we need more of. Like a lot of, uh, you know, in Europe, it's just so much division in America, division, yeah. and uh, everybody's choosing these extreme sides. And I, I know growing up, watching the Marx Brothers, watching Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello and the Three Stooges, that tradition of, um, well, they're not all slapstick, but there is a physical comedy, which is, you don't have to choose sides. Everybody can enjoy it. and so. Uh, I'm not trying to say this is on that level, but that's what we were trying for. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so at, at the moment you've had, well, you've had a lot of experience with feature films, big budget films. Uh, you've had, you, you've appeared in, in some of the greatest uh, series films. Um, I'm not going to mention any because I, I'm going to be here all night. Um, but can you tell me a little bit, I suppose, the, the difference in, in the experience between, you know, like that you found with doing a short film with a very tight budget that mostly I believe came from your own self and from your own friends and, and, and family in comparison to the big movie budgets, the trailers, you know, and all of that. Well, you know, I've been on really big movies and I've been on some small movies and uh, I find that a lot of times uh, they make the same mistakes. You know, if, if you have $40 million to make a movie, the, the people that are making it really, they set it up as if they needed 43. And it's like, we just don't have enough. And I've been on movies that had a million dollar budget that, you know, that really they were efficient. They knew what they wanted to do and they, they worked within those parameters. So um, I don't think money solves problems. I think money can mask problems. But uh, I think if you have a good plan, if you have good teammates, people that are really committed to it, and uh, you know, and you're really straightforward with everybody. Like I paid everybody on my crew. Um, you know, I, I paid them basically what they would have gotten one day on you know a three million dollar movie. So I didn't pay the union fees. I didn't. It was a non-union shoot, obviously. But you know, these are people that were, you know, the, the the day and a half that we shot. They were. It was like their day off. So they were happy to do it. They loved the project. So I think that um, as long as you sort of under promise and over deliver and keep your crew small, I think you have a chance with uh, short films and you know, you, you got to do it with a lot of amenities, but the, the less amenities that takes people out of your crew that you don't need. All of a sudden you don't need a caterer. You don't need drivers. You don't need dressing rooms. If you keep it small enough, we're all going to break for lunch. We're going to go to this restaurant over here. We're going to have a fantastic lunch together. for the 12 of us together. And that's one thing. The first small movie I did in Europe was in France. And my favorite part of the whole experience was the lunches with the crew. There was maybe 40 people in the crew and we would all sit down in whatever, we filmed a lot of it in Normandy. And, and so we'd be in, in a restaurant on benches and I'd sit next to, you know, I speak some broken French. And so I would sit next to some of the crew and, and we wouldn't talk about the movie at all. We'd talk about their kids or their life and everything. So, so to me, I like the smaller crew anyway. Um, I w if they want to bring me in to do a Marvel movie and pay me a ton of money and give me a big Winnebago, <laughs> I'm not going to say no. But I, I like the intimacy of independent movies and, and, sh and my short film tried to keep that energy going. Brilliant, brilliant. And obviously you need a goose that can take direction. You do need a goose. And, uh, you know, so we, uh, I actually, uh, some of the credits in my story, I have Gooser, I have Lookout, I have, you know, this. <laughs> I think credits are kind of silly in movies. and and. Uh, Robert Rodriguez is a filmmaker, very talented, but when you see his movies, he's like the editor, he's the costume designer, he, and you see his name 16 times. So the reality is I did about 11 jobs on the movie, but I didn't want to put them all in the credits because I think it looks like an ego show. Yeah, so, yeah. so anyway, I, uh, but I did have some friends like my friend Webster Winery, who's been my stunt double whenever I have a say and I can get a hot guy hired. He's my guy over 30 years since 1983. So 35, 36 years now. He first doubled me on a TV show in Boston a million years ago. Anyway, so he's a, a massive stunt coordinator now. He does Oliver Stone's movies. He came out and he helped chase geese into our shots. 
you know, and so he's just my buddy, and he wouldn't even take any money, and, and so I had some other guys just, you know, so everybody chips together, and then I found another friend of mine who is a hunter told me about a taxidermist in LA who has really beautiful, vivid, stuffed animals, and so I went and talked to this guy, and you know, the advantage of being in some movies is sometimes I'll walk in there and the guy will say, oh, you're the guy from Fire in the Sky, that's cool. So he let me take this really almost museum quality goose and use it for our stupid little movie. So it just, it makes a huge difference. And then uh, another friend, Visual Effects, I bartered for them to sort of bring the goose to life a little bit. And then in a few shots, we actually have an animated, you know, a, a computer generated goose. All right. So, uh, so yeah, it was all favors and all friends and uh, it was fun, but it's a lot of work. Uh, at the moment, uh, do you have anything in the pipe uh, coming up? I do. I have a new movie called Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre, which, right. which was directed by my friend Max Martini. And Max and I did a show 20 years ago called Harsh Realm, which Chris Carter, the guy from X-Files, yeah. directed. It was a TV show. And we got kind of, it got canceled. It was before its time. It's a little bit like The Matrix but a military version of The Matrix. Okay. And we actually came out before The Matrix, but people didn't get it, and Fox TV didn't get it, and they canceled it. It was one of Max's first jobs. He and I became close friends. And you know, I'm now we're getting to this, I'm getting to this point in my career, I've been doing it more than 30 years, where I, I really, I wanna work with people that I like, that I've worked with before. Yeah. I'm all for meeting new people and working with them as well. But you know, Sean Austin, Max Martini, you know, there's people that I've, Moira Kelly from The Cutting Edge, you know, yeah, if I have a chance fun. to work with these people again, you know, you already know you have a rapport and chemistry and, and that you like the person. So, you know, when it's low, when it's an independent movie, a lower budget, whatever the case may be, it really helps to have people there that you really, really are, are fond of because there's some hardship and some, you know, strife. So, uh, I, you know, those people, I'm really grateful to those kinds of people when they say, hey, yeah, sure, I'll come down and do it for you. And just in a couple of words, your experience at the festival uh, this year. I have had a great time at this festival. You know, this is the launch for Two Dumb Mix, and I thought it was only fair to, uh, you know, since it's sort of making fun of Irish Americans, let's bring it back to the motherland <laughs> and let's just make sure that's okay with you guys. And people seem to like it. Everybody laughed at the right places. And, uh, you know, so hopefully the, I'm hoping that the movie spawns a series of short movies with me and Sean. I, I, like I said, I want it to be in the tradition of Laurel and Hardy or Abbott and Costello. I think Sean and I have a good uh, dynamic where I'm a little more cunning, a little more selfish in, in the character, and his character is a little more gullible and has a big heart. And I think that there's just a great comic dynamic there. So we'll see. Hopefully, uh, th this will be the first of many. Brilliant. Well, we're getting ready for the uh, award ceremony. Uh, so uh, I wish you the best of luck and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So nice Take to meet care. you and talk have to a you. Good day. Thank you.